Hello, it's nice to meet you fourth time on our online masterclass and um, I'm very sorry I promised you to meet also with my piano player but um, unfortunately due to the quarantine and lockdowns and all this pandemic situation it is uh, again in not a good shape. We were not able to meet, not in the autumn because Maros was also positive so he was in quarantine and then uh, I was not so often in Slovakia as I was thinking, but we spoke a lot online and we um, I wrote everything down what Maros told me and I hope um, we can uh, we can give you a lot of informations. I would like to concentrate today on the work with the with your vocal coach or corpetitor or a repetitor or coach doesn't matter how you call it with the partner on the piano you are working with. It can be your teacher, it can be uh, another pianist, <clears throat> or you are already professional and it's your partner uh, you are doing the concert with. In any case, we will speak a bit about how to how to work uh, with that person and uh, how to how to be in respect with all our musical partners. So I would call this lesson lesson of respect. Uh, and that was the first word what Maraš told me when I was asking what I expecting from us singers when you work with us. He told respect and trust. So we have to trust each other. So we can be partners also in normal life or also in music. Um, it's everything about respecting and trusting each other. But I would like to start from very simple and basic things because uh, we... Uh, we see very often, also um, advanced singer are not really prepared for the lesson or for master class to work with the piano player. So the first thing what I'm expecting and what I recommend you really to do 100% to be in time. You can arrange all the time to be in time. Maybe there are one person of um, days where you are really in trouble situation and you cannot come in time or you cannot come and you have to cancel. But it's also respecting the time schedule of the person you are working with, of your pianist or instrumentalist accompanying. So be please in time. That's the first thing. Second thing, when you come in time as a singer, please come already warmed up. Don't open the door and tell, oh, I'm sorry, I could not warm up, so I need another 10 minutes uh, to, to warm my uh, voice. No, you have to do it before. It's also your time and you are losing um, your time to work with the pianist and it's also time of your pianist because we are everybody scheduled in these days and when you are, when you are studying, you are much more scheduled. So respect that it's not only you you have some lessons but also that pianists have some singer or another um, musician before you and after you so be so nice please come warmed up already with your voice and not only <laughs> but really well well done <laughs> and if you are coming you are warmed up and you are in time you have to bring your scores because um Sometimes we have good partner that uh, have already your music with you or have it, have it in uh, in tablets. It's also possible this time. But if you are coming with the printed score, please put your score together. Don't come with the separate. And especially when the song is long and you have ten pages like this, this pianist hate. And uh, I tell all the time when when you are doing master classes to our pianist, when somebody is coming with a score which is not prepared, which is not put it together, throw him or her away from the class. He should do it and he's losing his time. Because it's that's really despect. It's not respect, it's despect. And um, you should not expect him from the piano player that he will do it alone, or he or she, or uh, he will somehow work, work. And at two pages, okay, but still be prepared. It's also very nice um, to have the original score, especially if you are already a professional singer. Um, for example, in Germany, you cannot come on the stage, also in the choir, with the copies. So um, we, are, we have to organize all the time original score. 
So maybe some pianist, you can put the, the pianist or the original score and you can sing from the copy. Because, for example, I have my um, system of the working is um, when I'm doing something and preparing something for the concerts, I'm buying my original copies. Uh, original sorry and I'm doing copies from that and I'm studying from this copy because there I can write a lot and I like to make my notices uh, a lot notices in the score so um, I know that original I'm directly before concert or um, some some days before concerts I'm writing in the original only small notices which I um, want to see or need to see if I'm if I'm using score um, and if not, it's still, you know, very nice and you don't need to put it away because it's uh, already old notice which you don't need to see. So that's my way of how, how I work and then it's not, um, it's nice when you have copy where you can, where you can write your notices. Uh, you are coming for the lesson, so you have to be also musically prepared. Don't expect that your vocal coach will teach you the music, especially when you are already an advanced singer and uh, that's also respect you are coming with the, knowing the music and knowing the notes. And the second thing, knowing also the text, not only meaning what is normal, you have to know the meaning of, of each word. You have to know the meaning of the song or of aria, doesn't matter what about it is. For example, when you sing aria from the opera, you have to know what is the story of all opera and where is your aria and what happened before and what will happen after that you know which character you are in that in that um, concrete aria in the songs you have to know them because there are really a lot of um, happens in the song so you have to know each word meaning and then you have to know the sentence meaning and then you have to know the whole song meaning so be very nice with that and also um, go to the native speaking, for example, German people, or who already are high advanced to speak German, uh, when you are saying German, or French, or Spanish, doesn't matter. Each language, if you are preparing for the professional concert, or for, but also in the basic in the school, when you, when you start to um, to learn this in the school, to be prepared 100%, then you will do it automatically also in the future as a professional. So each, when you sing the music in language you don't understand and you don't speak native or you don't speak well, you have to train it with somebody who knows it. Because also in German, when you sing the German song and you don't sing der, aber der, that's wrong. And you have it all the time. And there are small nuances also in the French nasal vocals. Vowels. It's so different to sing en, en, un. And there are all the other places and there are more rooms and the less rooms in the mouth. So do it with the natives or high advanced speaking people with this language. That's very important. So you are coming for the lesson with all these things. And then communicate. Communicate with your instrumental accompanying player. Doesn't matter if it's piano player. It's everything what I'm telling. It's not only for the, for your piano accompanying. It's also for another instrumentalist or for a small uh, chamber orchestra or quartet or uh, orchestra. You have to all the time be open to communicate and communicate about what you want to work. Um, how you want to work, uh, for what you prepare. If you are doing together concert, you have to, you should make schedules when you know the concert is in two weeks. So make the schedule uh, from today to uh, in two weeks, how, uh, which lessons you want to work, uh, which part of the repertory and what problems you have or um, uh, maybe in, when you think of the contemporary music, you will have to learn how to catch the tone from the air because sometimes there is a piano player is playing, I call it, sometimes he's playing another song and you are singing another song in contemporary music. But somehow when you are concentrated, we understand it and we sing it and we finally very well and very good. So communicate and trust. We are coming now to this trusting trust that that person who is accompanying you is also 
high level musician, maybe higher than you, maybe less than you, but in any case, on the stage you are equal because you both are sitting there or standing there and playing for an audience. So you have to be dream team on the stage. And for that you can prepare on the on the lessons. So communicate and trust to that partner that he or she will um, help you to think better and to be better and to interpret better. Also, when we study alone our music, we have our imagination what we want to make in the music, how we want to sing it and what is the best part for us in that music. And um, try to be open that somebody maybe will tell you something else, something very opposite and you, you should think about that. It's not everything what we think, wow, this is great and here I can show me. Maybe somebody will hear you tell you, will tell you, mm, I, I don't think it's good, this is good, what you think it's not good. So think about and record all the time, record all the lessons and hear it afterwards when you, when you study alone, that you know what he or she tells you, that you can follow these recommendations. Um, also, um, when, you, when you work with your instrumentalists, and when you have enough time, don't work the, for example, songs from the beginning till the end all the time. No, you don't need it. You have, um, maybe you can you can make it once uh, to to have imagination, what to expect from her, from him, what a piano player should expect from you. But you know where are your problems. So maybe you can come with um, Engel, uh, the Engel von Wagner, and tell, okay, on the third place, on the third page, I have this problem and please I need to study it with you and in the second song I have this problem and so take the only the parts the, the most problematic parts at the very beginning and then you can you can put it together with the with the bigger place or with the for example whole third page and then at the next lesson you can work another another place and then again put it together so you can make some puzzle puzzle and at the very end you will have very nice picture, very nice music. And um, so um, it's, as a pianist, Maros told me, for him it's very important to have good atmosphere on each lesson. That this trust and communication and respect are between both persons, are from that side, from the, your side as a singer to the pianist, but also from his side back and um, to work in this and really uh, to trust what I'm telling he is respecting and what he is telling I'm respecting. And we think about what we are telling. Sometimes uh, sometimes also when we work together, we work together with Maros a lot. We are crashing on then and told, okay, um, let's, uh, let's, Let's do it like you want and the next lesson after some days I was thinking about, he was thinking about. So we are sometimes uh, trying to find some compromise between our both very, very um, opinion very far away. What I forgot to tell you, when you study your music, respect what is written there. If the is, composer is writing piano, you should respect it. It's not because, oh, maybe some of them, they will sing piano, but if there comes somebody and who told, oh, this is very good for my voice to sing forte here, so he should do it. No, you have to respect what the composer wrote. But I think I was speaking about that. So you have to read the score as a book. What is written there, respect. Um, um, for the advanced singer, they will know, um, it's very good to have also Urtext um, score. What is the original score? Or with the with some notices where you can uh, where you can read about um, some changes, for example, or some variations that the composer wrote it like this uh, in the year that, and, and but two years afterwards he changed it and. This Urtex you can sometimes find also online, but uh, you should read also about how the composer wrote that piece and why and why he changed some things. And um, it's it's very good to know so much about the piece as you can. 
you have Google, you have the printed scores, um, study it because it's important. It's, it will open your, also your thinking about the music and you will know much more about the compol and you will know much more about the music. So uh, really study, or not only the musical things, but also some behind. What is the behind the music? Um, when you are uh, studying music, uh, you see I have here original, I have here copy, and um, my way is when I'm starting to study something for a concert or also a study, um, for, for the concerts, for example, in Germany, you have to use only the original scores on the stages, on the professional stages. So it's um, it's very important to have it. And if you are doing really something professional, it's very nice to have original score because um, it's you will not sing only one once a time. So if you have have something and you you know you will sing um, often, invest the money. It's a good investment. <laughs> um, so my way is I'm buying the original score, but I'm doing also the copies because when I'm studying, I'm writing a lot in the score. Um, when I'm studying it with my vocal teacher, um, I'm writing mostly what she's telling me. Uh, when I study here, I'm um, writing there when I have the problem, what I need to work with the piano player. And then I'm crushing it away when it's done. And then I'm writing another things. Also, I'm writing the um, uh, translation in the score. Um, so there are a lot of things which are written in my score and I don't like to have it in the original. Um, only when I'm using the score on the stage, um, I'm writing only small notices, notices there, not everything what I have in my copy. And also for the um, piano player, if he or she doesn't have original, you... Um, you can speak with them. Some uh, there are a lot of piano players who have already the scores in the tablets, uh, so they are playing from uh, from media and not from the paper. Um, this you have to arrange with the piano player. For example, I have now here Len Viditti by Berlioz, and um, this is the original score which I bought. It's for medium voice, but I don't like, and especially Marsh, he hates this print. It's it's very small printed and. It's not nice to play. And then I have another version in the in the uh, copy, which is very much better printed, but it's um, it's for the high voice. So what we did, I copied for him um, because the, um, for the high voice, for example, are only three songs. Um, transpo there is some transposition, I think, on print songs and another or four, and another are um, in original. The two of them are original, still in the same, and four are transport uh, in transposition. So you can we we mixed it, and um, so we have to also ask the piano player which um, you know what is for his eyes and for his uh, for his playing which version is better. And it's good to use the the both use the same version of the scores. Because then you are speaking about page uh, two, and uh, in one score it's page one, and another score is already page two. So you have to, for the better communication, you have to have the same score. Um, um, so um, yeah, this is, um, we are coming back with this medium voice, high voice, low voice editions. Um, it's very easy in the songs to to choose what fits you and not tell, um, okay, I'm soprano, so I have to use all the time the high um, high voice edition, or I'm especially for mezzi or for baritones. Uh, we can. It's my opinion again, very personal, and I like it very much. I'm trying to find what fits to my voice. It's much easy, um, much easier in songs, uh, repertory, uh, opera. There are not so many transpositions. You have to sing the um, Carmen in the same uh, notation as it's written. You cannot um, f find the low or uh, high edition. But in the songs, there are a lot of versions. So you can, for example, when I started to study Lenuidete, I was um, still very high. Um, as a mezzo, so I really studied the high position because it's, uh, it fit 
fitted me in that time um, much more. And uh, now these last years I come, I'm coming much more to the metal, uh, to the to the medium voice, and um, I'm coming. For example, the first song Villanelle, I did all the time in the high position, and now I discovered that this lower position um, fits me much better now. And there is, um, for example, another song Au Cimetière which is very, very difficult. And this I never did in the high position because it's not possible for me. You are still on the high range. So I did all the time the medium. And you can combine it. You have to think about how it fits one song uh, after the other harmonically, but um, it's possible. And uh, don't be worried about uh, somebody will tell you something wrong. It's your voice. And if it's nice to hear also the harmonics um, from the different positions, you can, you know, we are developing, so you can change after some years, and you can make, um, you can, you can study it in another, in another position.